Yo, this is Lefty. Strength and conditioning coach Mark Greenwood won't be with us today. He's feeling a bit under the weather. <clears throat> but I got you guys for the, uh, for this weekend. Now, in this video, I'm going to be uh, reviewing, analyzing, and predicting Julian J. Rock Williams versus um, Jamal Charlo and Jesus Cuellar versus Abner Mares. Now, um, that would be on a Showtime telecast. So let's get into it. Um, the first fight up <clears throat> will be Jamal Charlo versus Jesus Cuellar. Um, that, um, upon first look, um, it seems like Cuellar should be, should be the favorite. And perhaps he should be. But, um, when I was, when I was crunching video for, for this weekend's fights, I look at Cuellar and I notice, uh, a lot of holes. A lot. So, um, so I'm going to start with Cuellar here. You know, Cuellar, he, he's a good fighter. Um, he's got good power. He seems to be a really big featherweight. Uh, in comparison, Abner Mars and Okendo look to be about the same size with Okendo looking a little bit more thick. Cuellar's shoulders and back just look just dwarfed Okendo's. So Cuellar's gonna have the size advantage today or uh tomorrow. Um now I want to say Cuellar has a 66 or maybe 68 inch reach advantage because Abner Mars is about five four and a half with a 64 and a half inch reach. Um but I don't expect Cuellar to really utilize that advantage much. I'm going to look for him to utilize his size, his thickness on the inside to try to bring the fight to uh to try to bring the fight to Mares, okay? Cuellar doesn't have a an authoritative jab. His jab is just mainly pawing out there to be a range finder for the big roundhouse left that he likes to throw. However, when he throws that left hand, his his back foot, he's a southpaw. So his back his back foot his left foot uh comes up to his front foot after he throws that left and then he's on the inside square okay a fighter like mares whose skills on tape at least to this point haven't eroded okay he's only 30 years old he's had a lot of big fights he's had some wars but his skills still look sharp okay and a fighter like that, that's been in the game that long, that's faced the competition that Mares has, is going to be able to take advantage of it. Um, and you just don't want to square up inside like like the way Cuellar does. Um, now, once again, um, Cuellar, when he throws shots, his hands don't protect his face. Okay, this is a problem that I seem to keep on harping on. Um, but his hands don't protect his face. Um, his hands and feet are in poor position while he's trying to hit people with power punches. Okay. When he wins, mainly it's based off of his size and his power. Um, another thing that I noticed against, uh, Jonathan Okendo was that, um, Cuellar, Seem to have him in trouble in round six. Okay? Then Cuellar threw a bunch of shots. And then from round seven on, Cuellar seemed to step off the gas. Now, to me, when you got a guy uh, that's seemingly ready to go that you've been hurting off fight, um, you want to get him out of there. And he let off the gas. So that tells me that he's got maybe conditioning issues and maybe... Maybe because he's so big at 126, he's struggling to make weight. But he knows that he can't box with top guys. So what is he going to do? He's going to keep struggling to make weight, sacrifice his conditioning in order to keep a size advantage on guys so that way he doesn't go up to 130 and face guys like Lomachenko or whoever's up at 130 like a Pedraza, a, a Puerto Rican champion. 
and a guy that's you know every bit as big as him as if if not bigger and he sacrifices that size advantage and he gets knocked out so i think that he's having trouble getting up to 120 or getting down to 126 cuz he's so big however um however uh Cuellar, you know there's just a lot of holes in his game a lot of holes in his game and um he just doesn't he doesn't utilize his reach enough to where Abner is going to have problems you know uh to where Abner's not going to be able to take advantage of Cuellar's disadvantages so that's what I've seen from Cuellar so far now Cuellar opened up the week at uh a two to one favorite. Abner Mars was a two to one underdog. Since then, since yesterday, okay, as of yesterday, December eighth, Thursday, um, the lines got up to Abner Mars being a one and a quarter underdog. That means that they're basic. It's basically a fifty fifty fight in the eyes of the bookies in Vegas, or at least in Bovada. So, um. I think a lot of people are seeing what I'm seeing. I want to see what happens in a weigh-in, um, but I'm recording this at about 4 p.m. They're not going to be waiting until maybe 6 or 7 p.m. or so. Um, so I haven't seen that yet, but I want to see how Cuellar looks at the weigh-in. That's going to be important. Now, Mares is a fighter. Mares still has the same skills that brought him uh, to prominence at 118 and 122 until he got knocked out by uh Johnny Gonzalez. Now, Johnny Gonzalez was a long, tall fighter that used his jab, that used the right hand. He was a lanky guy that could throw shots hard. Now, Cuellar isn't that lanky and doesn't throw those kind of shots to give uh Abner Mares problems. Once again, Abner Mares in his last fight, I want to say it was last June, about about a year and a half ago or so, or no, it was last August. Um, he had problems um, getting in on Leo Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz fought him or fought Mares um, in Mares' type of fight for about the first three or four rounds. And Santa Cruz started using his jab, his straight right hand, and then he would use his left hook or uppercuts inside and spin out. Cuellar isn't a the type of fighter to utilize long punches like a Johnny Gonzalez or like a Leo Santa Cruz to give Mara's problems. So I look for Cuellar to get to try to get inside on Mares, and if Mares can keep his foot outside his lead foot, so it'll be Mares's left foot to the outside of Cuellar's right foot, Mares will have the outside angle. Okay, because it's a southpaw against an orthodox fighter. So, Mars will have the the left foot. He'll have the outside angle, and and he'll be able to check hook Cuellar on his way in. Cuellar doesn't have his right hand up when he's throwing his left hand, unless he's corrected that since his last fight. He he doesn't have that. So Abner Mars will be able to if he could keep that outside angle on him, keep his foot outside of Cuellar's right foot. He'll be able to throw that left hook and spin out. Jonathan Okendo used that same technique in their fight, in spots. He tried to do it when he didn't have the outside angle, when his foot was inside of Cuellar's right foot, and he ended up either getting caught by the, by, uh, by the left hand, or he would trip on Cuellar's feet on his way out, on his way to spinning out, because you can't spin out on your left foot while someone's right foot is on the outside of yours. Okay? So... Those were the times that Okendo got caught. Mares is a better technician than Okendo, so I expect Mares to know that. And his skills are just as good as they were. He's no longer as aggressive as he used to be since he got knocked out. But he he took shots against Santa Cruz. So um, unless Cuellar, if if Abner Mares is still there after like round five, Cuellar is going to have a problem. So, um, I'm going to go with Mares. Um, Mares has, has gone 12 rounds 10 times or so. Cuellar, 
I don't think as much. Uh, I don't even know if he's been 12, to be honest. So, if Ebner Mars is still there after the middle part of the fight, Cuellar is going to have a problem. So, uh, you know, it's it's a bit of a risk for me to take this pick, but I pick Abner Mares despite being an underdog in the beginning part of the, you know, in the in the beginning part of fight week. He was a plus two hundred dog. I'll I'll pick him. I'll pick him now. So Abner Mares by decision, and if Quayar is totally gassed, then look for a TKO around eleventh round. But I lean more toward a decision to be honest. Now. Let's go to Julian J. Rock Williams um, against against Jamar Char, or Jamal Charlo. Um, this fight, there's two really interesting fights on Showtime this weekend. They got a great show. Um, Julian J. Rock Williams. Um, I watched a lot of tape on him, and uh, the thing that stuck out to me. Because he's got no real weaknesses that are discernible on tape. Okay, he he's got good hand speed. He's got really good power. He 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 could bang. He could box. He could front. Uh, he could fight on his he could fight on his front foot and press a fight, or he could fight balanced or off his back foot and counter punch. He doesn't really take many steps back though. But um. But uh. You know he could he could really do it all. Uh, I wish he would jab more, but you know he's he doesn't really have many disadvantages to be honest. Uh, Jamal Charlo is the same is the same thing. There's a Jamal and Jamel. Jamel is the def- more defensive fighter, the back foot fighter. The other twin, Jamal, who's fighting this weekend, is the offensive fighter. That fighter is. Very well balanced in the ring. Um, I wouldn't say he's a front foot fighter or a back foot fighter. He can do it all. Um, He doesn't really have very many weaknesses. Uh, Except that I didn't see him move his head that much. J-Rock does. I'll give him that. Jamel, not so much. He fights like a... Like, if I didn't know any better, he he fights like a Emmanuel Stewart student, almost. You know, straight up, utilizing his height, utilizing, utilizing his reach. Um, he fights like an Emmanuel Stewart fighter, like a Croc-style fighter. So, um, now, I'm going to go over some things that, that I noticed on both fighters now. Um, J-Rock's resume is not very good. His last tough fight that I seen was against uh, Hugo Centeno um, three years ago. They were both undefeated prospects, both taking big risks. And uh, J-Rock would have won that fight if Centeno didn't get cut before the fourth round. Um, However, in that fight, Centeno, who is a similar height to Jamal Charlo, Jamal Jamal Charlo, those twins are messing me up, um, he did try to walk him down. Um, and he got low on him a lot, okay? Uh, so it seems like against a taller fighter, J-Rock likes to kind of dip and make himself small. Um, now in this fight, J-Rock is 5'11", Jamal has come out to be 6 feet tall, with Jamal having a slightly longer reach, so... Um, but one thing j Rog really did well was he changed his physical, you know, he changed the style. He, he fought tall, he fought low, and then I think once he found out that he, he could fight low on Centeno a lot, I think that's when he, uh, you know, once he found out he could do better in that step, in that type of stance, he really, he really excelled in that fight. Um, he changed his angles, he changed his looks. Now... The first four rounds of this fight, I expect um, J-Rock to fight tall and to fight small, to vary his looks, to vary his angles, and to see what exactly is working best. So expect J-Rock to do a lot of different things the first three rounds or so. And whatever that look is that he's having more success with, more success with he's going to stick to that. 
It's on, it's going to be on Jamal or Jamal. It's going to be on Jamal to really uh to 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 adjust his style if J Rock is having too too much success. So another thing, Jamal looks to be a tad more uh defensively responsible, okay? Jamal has fought the better opposition and has gone 12 no problem. But he looks to be more defensively responsible in the way that his center line is more closed up than J-Rock's. J-Rock just has a more type of offensive angle. And I think that could be uh, a uh, advantage in this fight toward Jamal's way. Okay? Uh, so, uh, look for that. And then look for Jamal to throw more straight punches, you know... That's why I said he's a Emmanuel Stewart type of fighter. He he's gonna come out, you know, left jab, straight right hand, occasional left hook, but look for Jamal to throw more straight punches and look for J Rock to throw more crooked punches, uppercuts, left hooks, if he could get inside of Jamal. I'm not saying that he can't throw straight punches, but that's what caught my eye. Because if you're gonna fight a small fight, you're gonna fight, you know, the 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 left hook, right hand uppercut game on the inside. So look for that for J-Rock. I think J-Rock gets small toward the second stage of the fight and then continues throughout the end. Now the prediction, you know, Jamal, I want to say yesterday he was a minus 150 favorite, meaning if you had to put, a, if you wanted to win $100, you had to put 150 on Jamal. I think this is a 50-50 fight. No guy has real holes in his game, like I said. Um, there's things that I'd prefer each of them to do that they might or might not do, but it's just personal preference. It's not It's not a huge disadvantage like a Cuellar squaring up on the inside. So, anyway, I expect... Um, I think Jamal's going to win this based on his experience and based on his recent opposition being better and the fact that he's gone 12 rounds against a world-class opponent. All right, so that's the Showtime uh, part of this weekend. This is Lefty. Have a great day. Look out for Jamal to win uh, to win a decision. I don't think it's going to be a knockout. It, really, it, it, it would really surprise me, to be honest. So um, this is Lefty. Have a great weekend. Enjoy some boxing. Lefty's out.